Welcome back. Well, when it comes to our health, it can often be hard to strike the right balance. That's certainly the case when it comes to the issue of vitamin D. With growing awareness about skin cancer, we're shying away from the sun with good intentions. But it appears that may be causing another health problem. Australians are suffering from a surprisingly high incidence of vitamin D deficiency. To find out more, Emily Mitterhumer spoke to Dr Tim Wood, who's Executive Vice President for Research and Development at US ANA Health Sciences. She started by asking if it's mainly office workers failing to catch enough rays. It goes well beyond that. Um, I mean, people are spending time outdoors, but they're covering up when they go out and using sunscreens. And the use of uh, sunscreens, even SPF 15 sunscreens, will cut vitamin D production in the skin by as much as 98%. So even though people are outdoors, um, they're covered up and, uh, and not getting the sun exposure that they need to uh, maintain adequate vitamin D level. Now the dangers of too much sun exposure are well documented, particularly here in Australia. How difficult is it to strike the right balance and get enough vitamin D without doing the skin any damage? Well, you know, there's some useful guidelines here. Uh, and they vary from person to person depending on skin color and susceptibility to, uh, to sunburn. You never want to get sunburned. But the useful guideline that, that I'm most familiar with is you want to take a good guess at how much time you can spend in the sun before you just turn pink. Then cut that time by four. So if you guess that you could spend an hour in the sun before uh, just turning pink, cut it by four, that's 15 minutes. And that's the amount of time you want to spend in the sun per day to maintain healthy vitamin D levels. Now for those of us who can't actually get enough sunlight every day, is it easy for the body to actually absorb vitamin D supplements? Oh, it can absorb vitamin D quite effectively. And supplements are a great mechanism for boosting a vitamin D status. You know, there isn't much vitamin D in the foods we eat. You know, sardines and salmon and other oily fish are probably the richest, richest sources of, uh, of dietary vitamin D. Beyond that, there's not much in the food supply. And so supplements are a great way to augment uh, our, our vitamin D status. Uh, you know, most people, most supplements will provide only on the order of 200 to 400 international units of vitamin D per day. And we're finding out now that it's just not enough to boost our levels to, to the optimal range. And exactly why is vitamin D so important to our health? Listen, we've learned recently that it, it, it affects virtually all aspects of our health. The old, uh, the old outlook was that, uh, that vitamin D was important just for strong, healthy bones. And now we know that it goes far beyond that, that not only is it important for healthy bones, but it's important for cardiovascular health, preventing some cancers, promoting healthy muscle function, healthy immune function, good insulin sensitivity, and more. So a broad range of health, uh, health issues are tied up in vitamin D nutrition. Now there have been some suggested links between a lack of vitamin D and cancer. How well established is that science? It's strong. It's based at, to date on population studies. There are no clinical studies that I know of showing that boosting vitamin D status will truly prevent or reduce the risk of cancers. But the epidemiological links, these population-based studies, uh, are strong and consistent. So I, I think it's something we can bank on. What are your thoughts on daily recommended doses here in Australia in particular? Well, at, at USANA we have been um, reviewing the latest uh, research on, uh, on vitamin D and its roles in human health. And we've come to the conclusion that people need thousands of international units uh, of vitamin D supplementation on a daily basis to maintain optimal levels. Now, these um, levels of supplementation are far higher than those recommended currently in Australia and elsewhere. And we really encourage the Australian government uh, and support their efforts in reviewing the current science in vitamin D and reassessing their guidelines for vitamin D intakes and the allowed upper limits.